Hello everyone, Saga here, and today I bring you a spiritual message, so stay tuned. Right, so, I actually used to have an old YouTube channel where I would focus mainly on pick a card readings, um, and I've been considering bringing it over to this new channel that I'm pouring all my energy into instead. Um, but for this video, I'm doing a kind of mixture between a tarot reading and a spiritual message. Um, and it's intended for whoever feels, well, called to this video or feel that it resonates for them, really. So it's a collective sort of message. And what I do is before the video, and there's going to be more of these, I draw a few cards, which is why I keep glancing down. <laughs> Um, and I let them dictate what the topic of the video will be, and then I'll let myself just freeform talk, you know, channel messages, speak from experience, speak of opinions, and so forth, and hope that, well, know that the video will reach out and find the ones who need this. So for today's video, I actually drew from two different decks, but of course it's the same message, kind of, so... Uh, so for my or one of my oracle decks, I drew New Beginnings, beautiful card, and Happiness, also a very beautiful card. And you see here, the blue butterflies on both. So, that's the one. And then the other, there's Three of Pentacles, and Judgment. I love this card. So, now, the main topic that comes to me for this is of course new beginnings and how that connects with happiness. I am a person who, in life, due to life circumstance and also personal philosophy and worldview, actually live a lot in the, the realm, the sphere of new beginnings. Um, those who know me well will, you know, lovingly and jokingly know that the, the death card and the tower card is kind of like my card <laughs> for life. Um, and that change is like a thing for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly a shapeshifter and constantly going with the flow into new experiences and such. So, new beginnings for me is a very positive card. And uh, here's a little personal fun fact. The blue butterfly that appears in both the cards is also a very personal, symbolic image for me. So I very strongly feel that I'm encouraged to speak a bit from a more personal perspective. And the thing about New Beginnings is that I know that we often tend to think that New Beginnings are supposed to be this very positive and exciting and just, you know, happy thing, right? And they are. <laughs> but what I think is important, and I often get this message through spirit to give to people, to my clients that come to me to get readings from me um, through my business, you know, paid readings, is what often seems to be a very common message for a lot of people is that we sometimes seem to ask the species struggle with the idea of change. And the reason is that we have this romanticized, glorified idea of what a new beginning looks like and what an old ending looks like. And because we currently in modern time are very encouraged to be linear in our thinking, you know, there's the past, there's the now, and there's the future. Um, we tend to also believe that our life's journey is linear, which means that we often attribute thoughts to, um, how should I say this, to be placed along this linear line. So if I wasn't happy yesterday and I'm not happy today, of course, I have to fulfill something tomorrow and get that happiness tomorrow. So it's a linear 
thing. And similarly, we also place other th trains of thoughts into this mindset, such as the healing journey. Like, I was hurt. I grieve. I go through the, you know, five stages. I decide to heal. I heal. And then I am healed. And that's also kind of linear, right? The thing is, in my opinion, my experience, my worldview, there's no such thing as linear time. That is a perception of how our brain interprets reality. And so a lot of these things, such as, for example, the healing journey, aren't linear, meaning that say we have some traumas in our childhood we might go through a period you know of being troubled wounded and acting out from emotions and it might start in our subconscious self we might not be aware of the process it might be in our shadow aspect of ourselves and then we become aware of this and we might start working on it and then we have an idea that we've worked on it and we feel like we healed and we made progress and so we're done but in my opinion, time is cyclical, just like nature. In my worldview, if you look outside, you also look inside. What's out, you know, so outside, so without, so within. Um, so above, so below sort of thing. And in nature, yes, we might experience a linear shift throughout the year, but we notice that it's also cyclical. It repeats itself. While it might look different every time it repeats itself, it still repeats itself. And so the healing journey to me means that you keep peeling back the layers of an onion, but the onion might be unending. And that might sound discouraging, but in my opinion, it shouldn't be because it's about growth and evolution. Similarly then, the idea of happiness is something that we constantly tend to project into tomorrow thinking or goal-oriented thinking like i will be happy once i get this i will be happy once i do that i will be happy once this happens we attribute a linear timeline for our happiness and in doing so once we get to the points we have assigned or if god forbid we don't get to it at all we shift the timeline constantly because we discover that well, fulfilling this requirement or that I set out for myself, this goal, didn't automatically make me a happy person. So then it must be something else missing and we keep moving it to tomorrow. Um, same with, you know, going for our goals and dreams in life. It's like, I'll, I'll start it after I have this. I'll start it after I've done that. I'll start it after this and this and that. Now, what people who have received readings from me will know is that when I give readings, I do give them not in a timeline based on the human concept of a calendar. So I don't go in February, you're going to find love. Instead, I give readings as things have been explained to me. And of course, we're all different. All readers are going to have different communication and different ways of expressing themselves, both with spirit and from spirit through themselves to other people. And my way of communication and understanding of things is that it's not about the human timeline, it's about events. And so sometimes there will indeed be a, once you do this, this will happen. In fact, everything in my experience is a chain reaction, if you will. <laughs> so you might not find love in February, but you might find love after you come to a point where you feel established and in your workplace, for example. And that can shift depending on how much inner work you do and how much you work on embracing happiness in your workplace. But the thing about attributing happiness to those future goals is that we end up in this liminal space where we're never really happy because we're waiting for almost the permission to be happy. And so this is where the cyclical thing comes in with the new beginnings as well. In order for us to make a shift and start something new, we have to let things end. In order for spring to start, winter has to stop. And it's this, this shift 
that people sometimes get really caught up in and feel like they're going backwards because we're so linear in our thinking that we think it has to be like from bad growing up to good, right? Well, and if it's suddenly bad again, we feel like we're back at the start when in reality it's cyclical and things repeat themselves. And so oftentimes when we stand before a new beginning, what happens is, in my experience and experience and opinion is you have a so-called tower moment. Now, if you read tarot cards yourself, you know what that means. But if you don't, a tower moment is based on the card, the tower. And that card is often seen as quite negative because its meaning is literally upheaval, crisis, chaos. And the imagery is usually a tower crashing down or burning up with people falling off the tower and, you know, chaos, right? But as with other cards, such as the death card as well, while it has a negative tone, it's not a negative card, in my opinion. Yes, it signifies a time period of trial and tribulation and a lot of intense emotion and negative experiences but it also signifies an ending. And sometimes, as much as we like to believe that change is this adorable caterpillar becoming a beautiful fly, we forget the cocoon face, the breaking down face, the, uh, the face of everything feeling like it comes to a stop and things breaking down and pain and hurt might be a part of that process. And that's where we might feel either scared to go forward towards a new beginning, or we might feel stuck in the past because we feel like where we are is the wrong place. It's either feeling like it's a complete standstill or it feels like complete chaos, depending on if you're having a peaceful transitioning into something new, or if you're having, you know, a tower moment of everything falling apart so that you can begin it new. And so oftentimes we are afraid to embrace new beginnings. It also comes back to comfort zone. Sometimes we have a choice to embrace a new beginning, but we're too scared to move out of our comfort zone because we feel that we have to be in a place where we know where everything is because we have all our goals for us to be happy. I know where I am now and I had all these plans for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and next year and next month and, and 15 years from now that it's my timeline and my plan for how to achieve happiness. And if I don't have that, then how am I going to be happy? When in reality, to me, and you see I shift between the two because I got the two cards today. To me, it's more about embracing happiness in the now and going with the flow even into new beginnings and thus also letting go of things that no longer serve you. And I think that the two are very tied together, which is why I think it's interesting that I got these two cards and that they both have the blue butterfly in it as well. Um, and the tarot cards also play into that. You know, judgment can signify rebirth, for example. Um, and I feel that in starting to go with the flow and accepting new beginnings and daring to do new beginnings. New beginnings can be scary. They're not always this romantic, beautiful thing, right? They can be absolutely scary because you could have had your entire next 15 years planned out and then something happens and you realize that you don't want it anymore, that you can't have it anymore, or something is happening so that this plan is completely out the window. And you might have had this plan since you were like five years old, right? But it's in those moments that we really take on the true meaning of a new beginning. It's in those moments we are given the empowerment by the universe to realign ourselves with who we are deep within, to check in with that and not autopilot through life based on old goals or perceived things that we should accomplish and truly check in with what we want in this moment. And that can change. That can absolutely change. And that itself can be scary. But it's in that sort of accepting each moment, accepting the shedding of old skin, the accepting of new beginnings, and accepting our own innate power to empower ourselves and to build up a life 
free from external pressures, maybe like, you know, you spent your whole teenage years being told you have to be a doctor and then something falls apart and now you can't be a doctor anymore. And that feels like a crisis to you, but that's actually a new beginning. That's your chance to look into yourself and be like, did I actually ever really want to be a doctor or was I told I have to be a doctor? And it can be something major like that or even small things. And it's in that sort of internal process of connecting with yourself and what you want in every moment within the circumstance that the universe provides to you, which in my opinion is always for your highest good, even when it doesn't feel that way, that you find happiness in the now, not in tomorrow or 15 years from now or in a promotion or in, you know, anything. You find it in being you in this beautiful journey of life where you have within whatever reason and extent do you believe in, because you know, some of us believe in destiny and such, but where you have the power to determine in each day, each moment who you want to be within the circumstances provided to you, you can change tonight. You can change now. You don't have to do the plans that you might have thought that you have to do. There are no should, well, yeah, well, there might be some shoulds in life, but when we're talking about our own alignment and our own truth, there are no such, such thing as should, in my opinion. The shoulds are often given to us by internalized pressure from external things. We feel that we have to fulfill a worthiness to be happy. We feel that we have to do a thing to get another result. We feel that we have to impress these people. We have to not let those people down. or We have to fulfill a certain social standard or status. When in reality, the only thing we have to do is be happy, right? What else are you here for? You know? This life is now. Your life is happening to you right now. And while, yes, we still have to be humans in human society and we have to pay our bills and we have to, you know, get along with each other and respect each other because we have to respect others to also gain respect. That's, it's an exchange, you know, your, your rights are also duties to others. Yes, absolutely. And within that, we ha we do have limitations, especially depending on where we live and who we are. Sadly, there's a lot of limitations from human aspects of society. But within those constructs that you find yourself in, within those confines, are you everything you want to be in the areas where you actually have the power to change? And if not, What's stopping you from starting a new beginning? What's holding you back? Because if we look away from biological reasons, you know, mental health, it's a mental health awareness month when I'm filming this, and I'm a person who's strongly for normalizing mental health. Um, you know, I have my own experiences and, and circumstances with mental health myself. Um, in terms of, you know, trauma related and anxiety related su and such things. Um, I'm not saying that you can choose to be happy at any time because we have a natural balance and natural cycles and also biological factors that might affect us. But what I'm saying is there are areas in your life where you have control. And I do truly believe that if we embrace those areas, and embrace new beginnings and dare to reimagine and rebirth ourselves in the moments where we discover that we have become misaligned with who we are, our values, our goals, our wants in life, not our shoulds, but our wants. And we try to express them in whatever way we can, and we, even if it's something small like taking up painting in your free time because in reality you want to be an artist, but sadly right now you can't do that because of circumstance, right? But if you start doing the little things, the baby steps to align your life with who you are, truly you, without everyone else saying what you should do and who you should be, that's where we find happiness now. And we do that 
by seeing every moment as a new beginning, in my opinion, <laughs> and not being afraid to shift and to flow and to be. Because in my opinion, we're here to be and to experience. We are everyone, each one of us, are the universe experiencing itself, which means that you are just as important in your desires and your goals and your wants. They are just as valid as anyone else's. And while life gives us circumstances outside of our control, sometimes it feels like, what can you change now to embrace happiness? Yeah, I think that's it. That feels like everything. <laughs> so this is this video. Um, if you like this sort of format where I draw cards and I just free flow um, around them, sometimes more personal, sometimes less so, then please let me know by liking this video, maybe leaving a comment down below to let me know you appreciated the sort of structure and message so I can do more of these. Um, and yeah, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, please. Um, click the notification bell. I do upload now every Thursday and Sunday. It used to be Wednesday and Saturday. Um, and I also every Monday have plans to do a little energy update about things that might affect your energy, your, your, your mood, your emotions, your, your energy level, um, specifically astrologically each week. And yeah, so subscribe if you want to see those things and thank you for being here. <laughs> I wish you a Beautiful day or night, wherever you are, and if you want a personalized reading, wildmoonlilith.com.